Okay, so in this video, we're going to continue our exploration of integer programming. So you can look back at this is our, was our question. We're looking at Lakeshore Aquatic Innovation, and we're looking at how many wakeboards and sea dews to produce each week. We've identified our objective function and our various constraints. So let's go ahead and um, dive into how do we format this into Excel. So here is our Excel worksheet. So let me just bring this in a little bit bigger here so that we can all see. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our solution. Okay, so what we had was we said X was our number of wakeboards and Y was our number of sea dews and what we're setting up here then is our total and we're told that the profit on a wake boat is our wakeboard is six hundred dollars and a profit on the sea dew is seven hundred dollars and we had a objective function to be the following max z is equal to 600x plus 700y that was our objective function so what we're going to then do is we're going to say equals some product and we're going to take our variables and we're going to multiply them by our units and we'll just lock this in here, put other dollar signs and we can color this yellow so that we remember that these are our decision variables. <clears throat> Okay, and then we had some constraints here. So we had constraints and we had uh, the following constraints. We had a design constraint. So design hours was one constraint and our second constraint was manufacturing hours. And if you need to remember uh, exactly how to do this, then you can go back to a previous video. And we said that our constraints on this particular project were our design was 2x plus 3y um, had to be uh, less than or equal to uh, 12. So this is our right-hand side, and this is our left-hand side. And our manufacturing hours were 6x plus 5y had to be less than or equal to 30 hours. <clears throat> And we can format this. So this is just going to be some product. And we're going to take these variables and multiply them by our decision variables. And again, we'll lock these cells in place. And then we can just double click and you'll see that they will, our next uh, constraint line will then multiply against the decision variables themselves. So we have set up our, our, our problem here and we had our non-negativity constraints and our integer constraints that we will deal with in the next step. So we can go up to data then and we can click on solver and we get this pop-up window right here and it's going to ask us to set our objective cell. So let's go ahead and set our objective cell so our objective cell is our objective function, the equation that we set up. We are of course dealing with a maximization by changing the variables. Well, we're going to change the variables in cell B2 or C2, and we're going to add some constraints. So you should get a pop-up window that looks like this. And in both cases, we're dealing with less than or equal to, so we'll do these at the same time. So we'll highlight our left-hand side must be less than or equal to our right-hand side. That will do both constraints at once, and we'll say OK. And now your um, window should probably look like this. And then we're going to add one more constraint here, and we're going to say add. And this time, we're going to select our decision variables. And we're going to click here and we're going to say that these decision variables must be an integer. Okay, and then we're going to click OK. 
We're going to make sure that we have make unconstrained variables non-negative. That's our non-negativity constraint. And then we're simply going to select simplex LP. And then we are going to click solve. So there you have it. So there's our solution. Oh, and we can ask for, uh, we can keep solver solution and we can ask it for an answer report. So we'll say yes. And there you have our um, report here. So our answer report is there. You go back to previous videos for, for that. Well, we can interpret that in a second. So what we have is that our optimal solution then is to sell three wakeboards and two CDUs for a total max profit of $3,200. Now, importantly, what you'll notice is that $3,200 is less than the optimal profit that we calculated by using non-integers that we calculated in a previous video. So if you need to see that, see previous video, but we calculated that the optimal solution under linear programming conditions, that is not assuming an integer solution, would yield us $3,300. And in this case, what the optimal solution said was that making um, this point right here, three, two, whoops, let me make that a point, three, two, was our optimal solution at $3,300. So importantly, what we notice is that when we use our integer programming solution, it will always be less than our optimal solution had we just used uh, straight up linear programming, okay? So um, forcing an integer will result in a less optimal solution. Now, why might you use integer programming if it provides you with uh, not as good or not as optimal an answer. Well, the, the simple answer is that you can't make two and a half CDUs or two and a half wakeboards. Okay, typically you can only sell one, two, three, four wakeboards. You can't sell one and a half wakeboards. So this is why we might force it into a uh, integer type solution. Now, if we just want to look at our answer report here, we can look at um, what are our binding variables? So in this case, our manufacturing hours were not binding. There was slack, meaning that um, providing the company with more manufacturing hours wouldn't change the solution. In fact, it is our design hours that is our binding variable here. So if you seek to create uh, more CDUs and wakeboards, you would need to address the number of design hours in a given week. But again, you can see that kind of interpretation in a previous video. And this video was just showing you how to do integer programming in Microsoft Excel.